And welcome back. Today we are flying out the LA-15 at 8.0. And this thing is a little bit in the same boat as the C2B. And I don't say this because the C2B handles like a rocket ship. And with ship I mean boat. I mean this because this thing also relies very much on its energy. But this thing is actually a lot more versatile. Now the C2B is a little bit of the entry level. The LA-15 is more intermediate. And then you reach the MiG-19 which will be the final boss. But more of that in tomorrow's video. Compared to the C2B, this thing is, I don't want to say faster, but it's effectively faster because it has a lot more fuel to go fast. The C2B can go about 1050, but getting there will cost you about the entire fuel tank. In this thing, you will rip or redline around 900, and then you're kind of stuck. But you can do that all game long. And this thing will rip in a straight line because the engine is powerful enough. It doesn't turn particularly well at higher speeds because it does compress. But... Do not let this deceive you because the sustained turn of this thing is absolutely wild. So if you get someone on the 6 and you have to reverse them, you might not very easily get them off you. Because the instantaneous turn of this thing isn't that amazing. If you get like an A5 riding your 6, he's just going to pull into you. But if you start from a head-on perspective and you start going into a dogfight or he overshoots or he's not having a, a firing solution on you, you will drain almost everyone of their energy. And at lower speeds, this thing does turn quite nicely, but of course you have to get there first. Now an F9F, like the two you just saw die right in front of you, stood absolutely no chance. But there are also F9Fs. And more new Patreons, thank you all very much for supporting me. I will still continue on doing more videos every day of this week, so feel free to check them out on the daily. So we're going head on here into a little bit of a furball. We have an f Sable. not sure which one it is, I'm gonna guess an F2, but... Looking at those tracers, those are 50 cals. So it's an F-35 or an F-25. We go up and over. We dodge the F-10F, pretty dangerous because of that instantaneous pull. As well as the AM trees. I go straight up for a little bit, make him bleed all his energy. And then the second I bleed him enough, I try to go and transition into more of a horizontal loop or diagonal loop. The f f is completely out of energy. He gets licked up by a teammate. And we just continue dogfighting the F-35. Now the F-35 here is going to do absolutely nothing to us. If he keeps his fight up, he needs to dive away, he needs to run away. He's not going to win this. Now, I'm completely fine with him just sticking the fight. Because I'm just going to stick on him now. Keep an eye on the F9F, because if he goes head on with us, we have to break off. And it doesn't look like he's actually going for us, so I crit him. I set up for the F9F, but he doesn't go for us. So I turn back in for the F35. And I'm going to try and clean him up. But it looks like he is completely dead, so I'm going to leave him completely dead. And he can go kiss the ground for a little bit. The F9F is now stalled out above us. And the guy that licked up the guy that we stalled out earlier. Is now doing the same thing to us. So we pitch up straight into him. We have the energy to do so. And the F9F doesn't really have any means to defend himself here. But let's be honest. I'm an LA-15. Teammate is in a MiG-15 base. There is just very little these guys are going to be doing. If they're going to stick the fight with us. And here we go. First full game. We have an A5 Sabre as well as an A4E. And A4Es are actually unironically going to be your main enemy and that's not because they're particularly dangerous it's not because they are extremely annoying to kill it's because there's just so damn many of them a lot of people are still grinding out the f14 a lot of people are still grinding out israeli tech tree with the premium one so you see these things absolutely everywhere and how do you fight these things well you just hope they don't run and if they don't run then they just get absolutely clapped they can do very little against you. They do have that little bit of ability to stay on your 6. If they start on your 6, they are kind of dangerous. Good roll rate. Decent AOA. And they lose a lot of speed. So they can be very annoying to get off your 6. But they also still probably won't kill you anyway. Because it's an A4E. It doesn't have the best sustain turn. It doesn't have the best instantaneous turn. It just has some AOA. So all you have to do is dodge his shot and once you do he is dead in the water and you are completely golden. Now my spidey senses are going off, I look behind me and I almost get my ass eaten by an AIM-9B. Luckily we look behind us and we just dodged on time. Or rather I dodged before I even saw it. But that could have been the end of the match which would be kind of unfortunate because this match is actually a pretty good representation of the kind of match you will very often run into. Now if you can make it work and win every time, no. Uh, depends a little bit on your enemies. But this is how it's very often going to look like. And I'm going to show you what you can do in these scenarios. So we have an A5 coming from the right. I do not feel like getting hit by him. So we pitch up and over if he wants to dogfight us. I'm already setting up by going a little bit vertical. But he doesn't turn around. So I can then just dive back in. Another A5 Sabre. 
we just dodged the head on yet again but these guys are not particularly fast and i'm just gonna see if i can start picking off some people and lure everyone into a dogfight it's a pretty ballsy approach but that's how you have to play this thing or how you can play this thing and it's also the most fun now the f2h rams into the seal mark 4 that's uh, a bit unfortunate but at least that's someone else that I don't have to worry about. So the a 4 is completely stalled out in two turns. We shoot him down real quick. And there's still like three sabers around us. That are just licking their lips to get an LA-15 kill. Luckily we don't really lose speed. And we can do these turns all day long. But I want to make sure that I do not get these guys on me within seven, 700 meters. If they get dead on your six at like 700 meters. You're going to have an extremely tough time getting them off you. You want to turn preemptively. You want to make them lead your turn. You want to make them not be directly on your six. Because you simply do not turn well enough to get them off you. Now this is the kind of angle that I was kind of scared of. Luckily he was going a little bit too fast. And the two A5 Sabres are now kind of stuck in this raid fight. As well as this A4E. And now the A4E is appallingly bad in this situation. And I want to make sure that I do not give my six to the F25. So we turn back into him. And now the A5 as well as the F35 are kind of engaged with me. But they're all turning around. So we have a little bit of breathing room here. And we're going to use this to get our speed back up. And get a little bit of positioning. Because if we manage to set up properly with teammates around. it's This thing becomes borderline invincible as long as your defensive flying is good enough. And talking about that I actually made a 40 minute video on this plane. But the LA-174... They're basically the same, but it's probably one of my best matches in this game. A lot of defensive flying, 40 minutes of target prioritization. So if you are looking for that kind of gameplay, I highly advise you to check it out. It will be in the top right or in the description. So we're diving in. We're trying to build up a little bit of speed. And we're going to see who we are going to engage. And we are actually just... We have a triangle around us. We have one from the left, one from above, and one from the right. So who do we go for? Well, it depends a little bit on who reaches us first. Now, the other A5 comes head on with us as we are turning into the first A5. And we are going to be catching this guy. We have a little bit of room here. So I'm just going to be running this guy down. And I'm going to be parking myself on this guy 6. Because I need to get him out of the match. They are all playing it somewhat correctly. They're not flying it perfectly. But they're flying it right enough. And it's 3 of them versus 2 of us. And one of our planes is absolutely shit. So they're going to get away with it. I'm very close to this guy. Bullet mounted guns. A little bit of compression. A little bit of parallax. A little bit of him being squirrely. But now I have to dodge. I didn't actually kill him. Which is a big problem. I just dodge everyone. The A5 that we were on initially. Does not have the energy to do anything to us. And we are now actually just going to run him down. Because... We got him slow enough and we are left alone. The F-35 is flying the opposite direction. And the A-5, well we are on both the A-5-6s. So, so this means that they're running in the same direction. Front A-5 can't attack us. So we are essentially just in the clear. And they're starting to realize that they weren't going to win the fight. And then they just simply run away. And there's very little you can do. This thing becomes borderline useless if people just run away from you, especially in an up tier. And Sabres, and especially the F2 Sabre, are probably your worst nightmare. The Sabre is faster than you, it compresses less, similar roll rate, and those guns will absolutely shred you. Now the 50 cals aren't as bad, and very often you will just end up with some light damage. These things are pretty tanky, but if an F2 Sabre starts spraying at you, you better not make a wrong input, because you are going back to the hangar if he's... Gets his nose lined up even once. Here I am trying to be a little bit ambitious. Trying to shoot it from like 1.2 kilometers away. Can get the shot in. Uh, Razor is dogfighting an A5 in his A4E. And he's like yeah I have it. I'm like do, are you, do you really? Do you really have it? it uh, but then I realize it's Razor. So uh, yeah he does have it. I don't know why I even doubted him in the first place. So a little bit later we are now... In a little bit of a more favorable matchmaker. A lot of 7-7s, a lot of 8-0s. And just no up tier at all. Which is nice because then you can really just rock the entire lobby. And this thing becomes extremely, extremely powerful. So what do we do? We are just going to be looking around. We are above everyone. We do not use the web. We want to conserve some of our fuel. And I'm just looking around to, to see who I can engage first. Because it's not a matter of who's the most dangerous. It's going to be who's the most free. Because there's no real plane that can contest us in this lobby. So instead of looking for priority targets. I'm just looking for the easiest ones. Because I just want to get these numbers down. Because at the end of the day. If I have to 1v6. I'd rather 1v4 than 1v6. You know. It's. Uh, well I find it more fun. But in terms of 
trying to actually win it, 1v4 is a lot more favorable for us. So the Saab 105, which is, well, I don't need to explain to you. You've probably already seen the video I did on it. Is absolutely trash. We crit him. We hold the trigger down. And down goes guy number one. Now the F9F pulls into us. He tries to get the shot in. He does not. And we are just going to put him into a little bit of a spiral. And if he thinks about following this, then he's just going to drop out of the air. And we can do this all day long. Now I want to make sure that the meteor doesn't cut us off. So I'm going to go head on for a little bit. It's an NF. Careful that he doesn't start rapping. This guy from here on out is going to be absolutely doing nothing. I could have just looped up and fell on top of him. But a teammate comes in and he absolutely slobbers the guy up with his 30 mils. And we can start focusing on the rest of this furball. Now the J29 here is actually going to be my priority. But he's going very slow. He's flying away from us. And he's giving us a little bit of an angle. So we aim at him. We shoot his wingtip and his engine gets set on fire. Very unfortunate. And here I think about going for the F9F. Maybe he doesn't see us. Maybe we get a quick kill in. But then I dive a little bit. I'm going a little bit quicker than I thought. And this air brake does absolutely nothing. So we didn't rip our wings off. Which is great. And we can now put us all back into a vertical. But then from another angle. A Burrogan or Uragan comes in. So we want to be a little bit careful. Also Meteor diving on us from orbit. So I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. So I'm not sure if it's a Mark 8 or the long wing. If it's an NF, he will not be able to catch up with us. And it is an NF. He's also going to start rapping. So we just put it into a little bit of a slight climb. And we should completely outclimb this guy. He is going to get pretty close, but not close enough. So what we do is we just kind of keep him fast. We want to make him turn as much as possible. With those uh, long wings, he's going to struggle very hard to keep up with us at these speeds. And I'm just going left and right, making him roll, making him lose speed. And eventually we start outrunning him. And the second we do, he breaks off. Which is fantastic. I don't really feel like dogfighting this guy right now. There's too many guys around still. And if my enemy or my friendly, the MiG-9 over there, dies. I will just end up getting absolutely dogpiled. Now, it's as much as I like dogged. I don't like getting raw dogged by five guys at once. In the end of the day, the MiG-9 didn't actually die. And he got on the six of the J-29. So I probably could have actually gotten away with trying to reverse the Meteor. But it's sketchy. It's something that... You don't win reliably. It's something you can win. But if the Meteor plays it right. There's a very slim chance you will actually win a low speed fight. If we fight him we can always break off. Because we are faster than him. But it's going to take us time. Energy and a lot of positioning. That I don't really want to forfeit. Looking at the amount of enemies that there are left. So at the end of the day. Good call to not do it. Luckily he broke off instantly. If he had kept chasing us. I probably would have tried to actually dogfight him. With the main reason being that it's something that someone that really likes to kill us. And it's a plane that I don't really like fighting if there's multiple people around. It's like fighting a Zero or a Spitfire next to a P-51. P-51 catches you. You go a little bit slower. And then the Zero comes in and he just starts uh, doing his business on you. The Uragan was going for the 262. I saw this as an opportunity because he was probably just going to commit completely to this guy. Looking at how steep he was climbing. And which means that I'm going to get extremely close. Which means that I am just going to be uh, well, licking this guy up this time. Now he does the right thing. He starts diving away and he's trying to pick up speed. Making it harder for me to hit him. I'm going to drop my throttle because I do not want to compress. And yeah. I was too far away to reverse. Too close to actually run away from. So he's just kind of dead in the water. So he, he died the second he pitched up for that 262 and he went for the shot. Not so much the maneuvering itself, because in the maneuvering itself there was nothing much to do. You needed to be avoiding that situation altogether. And sometimes when you're flying defensively, then it's not about the maneuvers you do to, to reverse someone, to get out of someone's guns. It's about the positioning that you use and the way you use your plane to avoid the situation altogether. f is playing it right. He comes in fast, he dives away, he keeps going straight. And there's a Kiko on our left. And the Kika is a little bit higher. I don't think this guy is more dangerous. The Kika is essentially a worse version of me. But he has some positioning. And it's going to make it very annoying if he dives on us right now. Because we're going to be stuck in a 2v2. The F9F shows the 262 how they lost the war. Because the 262s are not particularly good at dodging missiles. At least not if you're stalled out. And they're all in a cloud. Which I really dislike. I really hate clouds in this game. Clouds like this I'm kind of okay with. Because you can actually play around them. But I just always find myself in the one cloud that I don't want to be in. And it's going to end me costing the game. I have some bad traumatic experience with that. So for now I'm just trying to get away from the Kika. 
and get a little bit of separation. I just want to see where the other guy is because I know there's a third guy there. I see the meteors in the clouds with the F9F. So I'm just going to instantly turn around and hope that the MiG-9 stays alive for a little bit longer. Kika also broke off. I want to bring these guys all down to the deck. And the second they do so, I can kill all of these three guys in a minute flat if they let me. So the MiG-9 is bringing them all down to the deck. Everyone is actually committing to him. I don't know why. I'm not sure what their battle plan was here. And I'm just looking for targets that are going pretty slow. Now the Meteor here is going to be my prime target. Because as I said before, they are very annoying to fight when there's multiple people around. And this guy also presented himself. So I have two reasons to kill this guy first. We crit his engine, we crit his wing. He is going to be essentially out of the fight. He might be flying around for a little bit. But I don't think he's going to be any threat anymore. FNF is going extremely slow. He did two or three turns with the MiG-9. So I can now just dive on him. But I'm going to rip my wing off if I keep this up. So I drop my throttle. I shoot him down. And now it's a crit meet here. A key card that's going to do absolutely nothing to us. And the MiG-9 is still alive. I'm not sure if he's damaged or not. But at this point it's, it's game over. The meteor is too slow. He's crit. He's not going to be going anywhere. Look how slow he is. So we just spray at him. We take it still off. And then we turn into the Kika. And we are just, just going to turn into him. And there's little he's going to be doing. He's also trying to get the shot on the MiG-9. So he's actually going to continue this fight. And I just slot onto a 6. And we start gunning him down. Now thank you all for watching. Don't forget about the LA-174 video. It's very complimentary to what I showed you here today. And otherwise, you'll see another video tomorrow, so you shouldn't be dry too long. Anyway, thank you all for watching. See you all tomorrow.